and welcome to the Happy Hour with Jamie Ivy podcast. I'm your host, Jamie, and I'm really happy that you're here. Every week, I invite a girlfriend to join me on the show, and we chat about the big things in life, the little things in life, and everything in between. If this is your first time, I want to say welcome to the show. If we were meeting for the first time in person, I promise I'd be hugging you because I'm a hugger. But since you're just listening to me, I hope you believe me when I say that I'm really glad you're here. Hey guys, any of you ladies out there looking for a way to be refreshed? Well, the sponsor for our show today is Restore Women's Conference, and they think that they have what you need to be refreshed. They want you to invite your girlfriends, your sisters, your mom, anyone you want to bring with you, and join them in a time of fellowship, learning, and laughter. Or you know what? Come by yourself, and there's nothing wrong with that, and connect with like-minded women who are seeking to renew their joy in the Lord. The conference is happening next year, March 3rd through 5th. So mark your calendar March 3rd through 5th and come out to sunny Orange County, California. Restore is a weekend conference designed for women to experience God's grace and rest in an authentic and uplifting environment. Your admission to the conference gets you an unforgettable speaker lineup with Allison Allen, Allie Worthington, and me. I'm going to be speaking at this event. So not only do I think you should come to the event, but come and say hi to me. That'd be awesome. There's also going to be great worship, Bible journaling, holy yoga, three meals, plus swag bags and access to our handmade market and mocktail social event. Guys, be sure and get your ticket before they're gone. You can go to RestoreWomen'sConference.com, and they're being really kind to all you Happy Hour listeners, and they're giving you a promotional code of $50 off your admission. Use the code Happy Hour and get $50 off. The code is good until the event sells out. For daily devotions and more information, follow Restore Women's Conference on Instagram and Facebook. Guys, today my guest is Kate Braun, and I'm so glad that Kate and I connected and she reached out to me about being a guest on my show a few months ago. I was immediately struck by her compassion for others around her, as well as her strength and boldness that she possesses. We have such a great conversation about talking to your kids about disabilities that I know that you're going to love it whether you're a parent or not. Guys, real quick before we get to Kate, I want to ask you a huge favor. If you're loving the show or if you kind of if you kind of like it, whatever, would you mind leaving a rating or a review over at iTunes? It's really weird how iTunes does things, but just by rating it and then leaving a review, it helps more people find the show. And we want more people with us at the happy hour so that they can be encouraged by the amazing guests that join me each week. Super easy. Just go to jamieivy.com slash iTunes. There you go. Leave me a rating or a review. I'll take five stars if you're giving them out. Okay, guys, here is my conversation with Kate. Hey, Kate, and welcome to the happy hour. Hi. Thank you so much for having me. I am so glad uh, that you're here. Now, I want to try and remember how you and I got connected because I'm not really sure. I heard about your podcast through friends. Okay. I have been involved in like the influence network and I think we just had like circles that were like overlapping and I found you through people that enjoyed your podcast and so they told me that I had to listen to it and I think that was like when I didn't know exactly what podcasts were. For sure. I was like what is she doing? Right. But then I started listening and I think one of the first podcasts I listened to of yours was Susie Davis's Mm -hmm. and I went, I was driving, running errands, and I drove straight to the bookstore and bought her book. Oh, she'll love to hear that. Yes, because I was like, she is speaking to my heart. Like, I looked it up online, and Barnes & Noble had it, and I went straight there before I even went home. And so that was when I, like, started listening, and I think we just had mutual friends in the that's, Instagram fear. In yeah, and that's where, awesome. Susie was on episode number 38 if you want to listen, and she talked a lot about fear, mm-hmm. which was so good for me. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So good. Well, I'm glad that you're here, and I'm glad we have um, other friends in life. Um, tell everybody <laughs> what you do. Well, I right now am a blogger, I awesome. guess. Awesome. Which is, like, crazy to say. But I am staying at home right now. I had um, – major spine surgery in January. And so my life has been a little funky. And so I am a graphic designer and a blogger. I work for some companies in Charlotte, North Carolina that I'm able to do for my house. Mm -hmm. And it's great. So I love the internet and I work from home and I'm just really enjoying 
the social network and all of the things that the internet has to bring. I think the internet is so great. It has a lot of bad things, but it just has so much life it can give people. Mm -hmm. And just through my blog, I've been able to connect with some crazy connections that without the internet, wouldn't be possible. Yeah. I know. I think about how much, you're right, the internet has some things that are really scary. And as a parent, it's a really scary thing for me sometimes. Mm -hmm. Um, But it also has so many amazing qualities that it's almost like we have to teach our kids um, how to find those things and how Mm -hmm. to, and not, and let them know about the bad things. Like, I think we need to tell them what's out there. But I was thinking, even as you were speaking about it, I'm like, I could list off so many people that I would not know today if it weren't for internet. Yeah. I mean, I've just met so many friends and gotten to talk to so many amazing people that I would have never known about. Yeah. Yeah. And I think too, like I've read some blogs that I'm like, Lord, like that's what I needed to hear right Mm -hmm. now. Like I needed that story or I needed that message to hit me right where I am. And I just am like overwhelmed with thankfulness in that moment where like if it wasn't for the internet, I wouldn't feel so connected and feel less alone in the XYZ circumstance that you're in. Uh, I know. It's so true. Well, I'm glad that you're in the internet world. And I, <laughs> speaking of your blog, I was just looking at it. And um, you have some great stuff on there. And I just want to jump straight into what we're going to chat about uh, awesome. today. You wrote a post. And this is going to need some backstory. But I'm just going to say I could not believe what I read when I read it, honestly. I was thinking to myself, this surely does not really happen, what she's saying. Mm-hmm. Um, and your post said, stop taking pictures of me. Mm-hmm. Okay, so t- let's 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 back up a long ways before yeah. this post. Um, but I literally, Kate, read that and thought, this can't really happen. Mm-hmm. I cannot even, I cannot even imagine the scenario. So take us, take us back. And then I want to circle back to these moments. But tell us, yeah. um, tell us about your, your story. Yeah, so... Um, I was born with a condition called dwarfism. Um, There's which, a bigger word too, though, right? Achondroplasia. Achondroplasia. Okay. Yeah, but that's just medical. That's just a medical term and okay. a mouthful. <laughs> yeah. So dwarfism. Yeah. Okay. That I would say would be the most precise and most politically correct word mm-hmm. that someone could use. So I was born with that. Um, 25 years ago and grew up in a small town in Nebraska and really which is crazy I grew up in a small town and I never got bullied from like through high school because everyone you knew everyone I'm sure huh I knew everyone it was such a blessing it was one of the biggest blessings I can think back to my life because I have this obvious physical disability that um, always, even when I was a child, I was smaller than the other kids, like Mm -hmm. was just always, I was always proportionally smaller and it just is obvious. And I just was so blessed that I was never, um, bullied during that time and, um, had a great loving family. When you look back on, like, I love that you're just talking about how you just grew up and you felt so safe and secure. Because I, I saw you write something about when you got to college, it was a little harder. But when you look back on growing up, do you remember a moment when you thought, hey, I think that, like, there might be something different here? Yeah, no. No, I don't you remember never remember that. that. No. I love it. My mom, so there's this conference called Little People of America Conference. Mm-hmm. And it's a um, conference where each year a lot of people that have been born with dwarfism get together. And my mom took me to a conference when I was young, and we were there for like three days. And I turned to my mom and I go, Mom, when are we going to that place with all those little people? Mm. And my mom was like, Honey, we're here. Like, <laughs> <laughs> this like, is it. Yeah, like these people are the same as you. Like, so I just don't ever remember that being a issue. Mm-hmm. I don't remember, I knew like, I couldn't compete in sports like other people, but I didn't really like sports. Yeah. And they were like, I had to go and sometimes move my high school schedule around. So I wasn't like trekking across campus and all the way back and, you know, like getting exhausted. But nothing like, I just never felt like I was different. Mm -hmm. 
Do you think that was your parents or your community? Oh, both. Both. I think it was my parents definitely first. Um, but also just the community. And I think a lot of it just was like such a sweet gift from God um, that I had the opportunity that not all kids have um, to grow up in a community and a family like that. That's amazing. So is your family, are y'all all all a family of believers and following Mm -hmm. Christ? Yeah, we are. So the crazy thing is when you are born with dwarfism, it's a, it's usually a rare genetic mutation. So all of my parents are average sized. So my whole family, all of my social, like social group, mm-hmm. um, and all of my extended family are average sized. So I grew up like, so it, I was a little different, but it didn't really ever seem different from anyone else. And so you went through high school. Mm-hmm. Um, it sounds like you have an amazing family. Um, and then you went to college and where'd you go to school? I went to a small school in um, Nebraska. Okay. So stayed in Nebraska, went to college. Was that, um, I mean, I guess I would love to ask your mom, but she's not here and I'm talking to you. But I often wonder if um, you had such a secure growing up um, in a world that can be so completely awful to people who might be different than them. Um, And then I, I would wonder if your mom was a little nervous about sending you out into the world. Yeah, I, so I I was kind of a crazy kid. So in high school, my mom, I think, was always nervous in sending me out into school, but college wasn't the first time she did it. I um, loved to travel, and I felt like I was always pushing the envelope with her. So like (laughs) wanting to go. So like going to college was no big deal. Yeah, so like wanting to go to camps, wanting to go on trips, you know, like where they weren't around. Um, I'm a graphic designer and in high school, I had an opportunity to study at the Art Institute of Chicago for a summer. And my mom like tells the story today. She was like, I was so scared. I was just dropping my daughter off in center city, Chicago. And I left her there for the summer, you know? And so I think like all of my, like, I just never thought that I, Like, I just wanted to do everything everyone else was doing. So I think I, like, prepped my mom for college a little better than, um, like, I could have. (laughs) For sure. For sure. Um, But I think as parents, I'm thinking, like, you know, my oldest is 12. And I have, you know, a couple of years, oh, my gosh, until he goes off to college. And I think anytime we launch our kids into the world, I've never done it, but I'm assuming – there is a little bit of fear involved. I mean, oh, yeah. oh my gosh, I can't even like, I can't even think about it. Um, okay. So you go to college and was that a little bit of a harder experience? Yeah. I just remember, I, I don't know if I could really like pinpoint why it was harder because I just felt like my confidence was shaken, Mm. you know, like Mm -hmm. it's not, and it's not something that you always like want to admit because you would like to go into the world and be brave Mm -hmm. and all those things. Mm -hmm. But I remember it was a lot of transition where I really, I didn't feel like I was like myself. Mm -hmm. I didn't feel like I was, I felt fear, Mm. you know, I felt fear of what I felt vulnerable and I felt fear. I think. Mm. of living in a new space, not knowing many people around me, and not knowing how people would accept me. Yeah. And so I don't think I would say it was like someone else's issue or my issue. I think it was like really like personal and external. Yeah. And, you know, as you're talking, I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, I feel like that that everything you just said, like if you take out the fact about dwarfism, is yeah. like an overall theme for all of our lives. You know what I mean? So true. So, I mean, it's, it's just all of us walking into a new world. Yeah. Some of us do have external circumstances, but the internal circumstances are also there. Yeah. Yeah. Which is crazy because that's a lot of times how I like to describe my life to people is we all have stuff mm-hmm. on the inside that makes us nervous and makes us insecure but the Lord just put mine on the outside. Mm. And so, and a lot, and people have that issue in a lot of different circumstances. For sure, yeah. 
And so I walk into a room and I just am a little more vulnerable. Mm-hmm. But we all have that stuff. Yeah. At mm-hmm. some point in our lives, there's some like in our layers somewhere. Mine's just on the outside. Yeah. So just had to deal with it differently. <laughs> for sure. For sure. Okay. So let's circle back to this post that you wrote. Yeah. Because I need you to tell me about this because this is really disheartening to me. Yeah. Does this really happen, Kate? It does, which is so. This post was really hard for me to share I'm because sure. a lot, it's something that happens and it's something that's really sad that happens, but it needs to be shared. You know, like I don't like talking about all the hard, like the hard things because there aren't a lot of them, but this is just icky. Yeah. And this is just one of those things that like, maybe if we tell people about it, maybe if we talk about mm-hmm. it, it won't happen as much. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I am completely in agreement. That's a, one of the, like, crazy reasons I'm glad that you're here. Um, although I'm glad I get to meet you because you're just lovely. Um, <laughs> but also, I love to bring awareness as well. Yeah. And I was just talking, we had our happy hour live event, uh, not not the live show, but we had a on the road event last night. And there was a woman that I did a little interview with, and she is a parent of a child with severe special needs. Mm-hmm. Um, um, not walking, uh, nonverbal. I think he's about six and he's probably like a 12 month cognitive. So severe disability, severe mm-hmm. special needs. And one of the things that she talked about, um, it, and which is why I wanted to chat with her is just that it's okay to talk about it and yeah. it's okay to ask questions. And her main thing was, um, geared towards parents. Like if your kid, um, has questions, don't say like, Oh, don't talk, don't look, you know, mm-hmm. but to really be able to like open up the conversation. And I feel that's what you're doing in your writing as well yeah. as you're saying, Hey, listen, we can talk about this. This is not a scary subject. Yeah. And we're going to all be educated on it because the truth is if you've never known anyone with dwarfism, you might not know these things. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so I feel yeah. like that in a very, you know, different, but same level. I'm like, here's some things yeah. about parenting black children. You know, yeah. like you may not know that it's not okay to say this. And so we get to talk about it. So I'm proud of you in that sense. I'm proud yeah. of anyone who brings awareness to situations. Um, yeah. Do you ever get tired of bringing awareness? Um, yeah, I yeah. think so. I think. I can imagine. I mean, you're like, I, I, I don't know if you've ever thought like, I don't want to be the poster child for this anymore. Yeah. I think when I was younger, I did. I was like, oh, I don't want to explain this. Right. But I think now, like, the Lord has blessed me with, like, a lot of, like, energy behind it mm-hmm. and being like, okay, if I'm not going to do it, who is? Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. and I want to help so-and-so and so-and-so, and I want to make their life better. Uh-huh. So it had, like, I think the Lord has given me, like, a bigger perspective on it and not, like, I have to do this to, for my life, but, yeah. like, I'm doing this for everyone else. For sure. For sure. Okay, so I can imagine and I could pick a couple words that would probably describe what that feels like in that moment when you're pumping gas or you're on a date with your yeah. husband or you're in a grocery store and you see someone taking a picture of you. Like what are what does that feel like? Um helpless. Mm. Because so a lot another common situation like you just talked about and I wrote about in my blog is like a child saying, Hey mom, like why is that lady so small? Or mom, like, look at that lady. And I don't, I feel less helpless in that situation because I can say something. I can say, hey, like, I'm okay, small because God made me this way. Uh-huh. And I feel like when someone takes my picture or the light flashes from their phone, it is, like, I'm helpless. I don't have a voice. Mm-hmm. I don't know where that picture is going. I don't know what they're saying about me. Yeah. I like I would really be curious to know where all these photos are. Hmm. Yeah. And <laughs> but you know, I've never thought about what you just said about not having a voice. Yeah. Um, and in that moment they took it, they take that away from you. Yeah. And so and I've tried. I am a pretty outgoing person. I, so. I would I was about to ask and I could <laughs> guess that I could see you sometimes being like like kind of calling them out on it. Have you done that? Yeah. Yeah, I have. And it has been the most difficult social situation to deal with um, because a lot of people, like, deny it. And oh, so, so they're like, because they're embarrassed, yeah, for which sure. is totally, like, they're being called out on something. Well, but it's they like, should be hey, embarrassed, right? 
Yes. <laughs> it's like, hey, your phone just flashed. And I try to do it when there's like a flash or something so I can like mm -hmm. have a little – like I'm not being assumptive about someone. So yeah. like, hey, your phone just flashed and it looked like you took a picture of me. And I usually say something like, that makes me feel – really disrespected and I hope that's like something that you didn't do but can I ask like why you did it mm. and I usually get like ignored or they walk away and I mean I'm dealing with a group of people that probably don't have respect for the situation anyways that's probably right you're right so yeah so I'm trying to share it on my blog to see if maybe other people can empower other people to stand up when that happens mm -hmm. or just because there is such like our phones are like a crazy good thing and the internet's a great thing. But there's also, like we said, bad stuff about it. Sure. And so this need to capture everything, um, I think is unique. Like there's a website called like People of Walmart. And they take pictures of crazy people at Walmart. Uh -huh. And just like that phenomenon. Oh, of like and they post them without them knowing. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it'll be like photos of other people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So just that phenomenon is just crazy to me and something I'm still like hopefully like by creating dialogue about it, I can better understand it yeah. and maybe help people. But it hurts moms. I mean, I have moms that have children with disabilities oh, yeah. that have been like this breaks my heart. Mm. Um, so what do we do about it? We don't know yet, but I think talking about it's a great step. I was going to say, I think it's a huge step. And what you're doing even um, like talking to me on the happy hour is um, not all my listeners have kids by any means, but a lot of us do. And yeah. so, you know, what it does, I think one thing I even noticed last night in that conversation with the mom whose child has uh, severe disabilities is that it gives us a little of the freedom as we parent kids because kids are curious, you know, mm -hmm. and um, kids – Although it's like I even saw one of your Instagrams recently um, about what a little girl said to you at a wedding. And kids yeah. just say what they're thinking and they're so yeah. curious. And I think sometimes whoever's with them, their guardian, their aunt, their grandma, their mom, feels as though, oh, my gosh, like they said what we might be thinking and that's inappropriate, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. But I think that you're giving us a space to say, yeah, let's ask or, yeah. you know, let's find out. And I think that's a real – you're, like, giving permission to people that is great, and you're giving yeah. this freedom, and you're also portraying this confidence of, yeah, you can ask questions, and it's okay. Yeah. Yeah, I try to do that with kids now that I meet. Oh, yeah, so uh, tell like, us what happened at the wedding. Oh, well, kids around that age of, like, being aware of differences but not knowing – how to handle them, mm -hmm. like first grader, is just a really confusing time for kids, mm -hmm. um, especially when they meet us. So I really try to be intentional with kids of that age and just be like, hey, you probably noticed that we're different. <laughs> it's okay. If you have any questions about why, like you let us know, you know, uh -huh. like just to like, because they have all those kids have so many questions yeah. running through their mind. And if they have great parents, they know to hold them in. But they don't know, like, what to say. Mm -hmm. And so I just, like you said, want to give them permission mm -hmm. to, like, ask the questions. Yeah. And, again, back to a blog post I wrote. I wrote a open letter to a mom at Target of a mom that hushed her child. Oh, I haven't read that one. Yeah. And so I – it went – it got a lot of attention. But the fact – the reason why it got attention is because everyone with any type of – physical disability could relate. Mm. Someone in a wheelchair had written me to someone who's blind and every mm -hmm. single person wrote me and said, I would rather someone ask me a personal question than mm. stare at me. Mm. Like thousands of people mm -hmm. said, I want people to ask me questions. Yeah. Um, I just think that's so great. Like that's, that's like what we need to do. We need to let no people know that it's okay. Yeah. And so we asked her and she told us that she had no questions. She had no worries about why we were little because God makes everyone different. And she had just gone to VBS, she told us. And she goes, and you're just like Zacchaeus. Oh. And I was like, there we go. That VBS needs like a gold star. <laughs> she was just so confident. No, yeah. God makes everybody different. 
Yeah. I love no that. problem. Uh-huh. So, yeah. So just tell the people who are listening, because I know this, but they don't know, and you keep oh, yeah. referring to we and us. And so your husband um, also, ha does he have the same form? And I that was the weird yeah. question. I don't even know if there's different forms of um, the big medical term that you told me earlier. Oh, wait. Um, so there's a lot of different forms of dwarfism. Okay. But achondroplasia, which is the big word, is what we specifically Okay, have. your husband as well. Yes, he okay. does too. Okay. So, yeah, so my husband as well. So he um, is probably not as vocal as me. Mm -hmm. but um, That's okay. Is, you just need one vocal person in the marriage is, and you got is, it. Yeah, is pulled, pulled, pulled in with me. But yeah, that's exactly, okay. exactly. Um, okay, so I think that I want to ask you just, will you just talk to us? I mean, you're talking a lot about, hey, go up and ask questions. Like, it's yeah. okay. Um, I'd rather that. Can you give people some words? Can you give us some, these are not okay and these are okay? Yeah. Questions and words. Can you go there for us? Yeah, I think. I mean, there's one main word that, I, that I'm thinking of, but there may be others. Yeah, so I can speak from the um, voice of having dwarfism. Um, the word midget is a really um, derogatory word mm -hmm. for a person with dwarfism it actually goes back to the like the carnivals and freak shows and being I didn't on know display that. mm -hmm. that's where it started so they would take people with dwarfism and kind of like put them on display yeah in carnivals okay um, way back when uh -huh. and um it also it comes from the um word like midge which is like small fly Okay. Um, so it has a very like derogatory mm -hmm. name, uh, like meaning yeah. to it and history mm -hmm. of it. Um, so that would be one of the most probably derogatory words. Mm -hmm. um, and see, that, I would guess that a lot of people wouldn't know that, Kate. Do you feel that way? Yes. A lot of people don't. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. And I, um, I want to be one of those people. I know some people are really offended by it. But there is a sting when I hear the word, but I also am like, hey, if they're saying it to me, they really probably don't know. And mm. this is my opportunity to tell them. There you go. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And, you know, I would have to ask you, too, we have a good friend of ours who has albinism. Mm -hmm. And, um, I mean, I'm thinking when you said about the carnivals, I'm like, for him, I always think about him because media does not portray people with albinism in a good light. They're usually like the same character in every movie, um, kind of scary and standoffish. You know what I mean? Do you feel that media does that as well with dwarfism? Oh yeah. I, um, I think that's the crazy thing. There's a lot of people living with dwarfism and there's just, I think I saw Peter Dinklage in one movie that I've ever seen in my whole life where he was just like the guy that works at the coffee shop. You know, it's, he, Peter okay. Dinklage is a person that has dwarfism. That's a famous actor. And so actor. what movies are he in that I would know? Oh, I don't even remember it. Okay. Like, okay. it wasn't anything popular. Okay, got Like, it. that's, like, how far, like, we're going to find an example. But Let's he's see. in Game of Thrones. I oh, think. okay. I don't – I know – I think I know now, but I haven't seen that show. Me Although either. I hear it's amazing, but whatever. <laughs> I think it's on I, HBO, and I, we don't have that. Yeah, we don't have cable. And okay. so I haven't – ever seen it but I do and he plays like a pretty normal role uh -huh. there yeah. too um but there's only been one movie where I've ever seen him portrayed as like just a regular old man working at a coffee shop. shop yeah yeah and I'm like think how much power that would be mm -hmm. if like there wasn't jokes about it and someone just like had a daughter that had dwarfism right the next rom romantic comedy and it wasn't about the dwarfism it just mm -hmm. was about a girl. Their family isn't different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, no, I don't think the media does a great job at portraying it. However, I do think there are some shows uh, like on TLC, like The Little Couple mm -hmm. and Little People Big World, mm -hmm. that do a great job okay. at exposing people mm -hmm. to the fact that it is normal like that like they just I see. really live normal lives mm -hmm. i think um, i've seen one of those where the family lived on a farm yeah which one would that be little people big world okay so i've i used to i've seen that a couple of years ago yeah. um and then i know the other one you're talking about because haven't they adopted 
Yeah, they've yep. adopted. Okay, and that's yeah. where I heard about it from. Yeah. Yeah, sweet, sweet families. Um, and, you know, TLC has some crazy things on there. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it just exposes more people mm-hmm. to differences. Yeah. And I think that's good, but I think media in general hasn't picked up on that. Mm-hmm. Um, like mainstream Hollywood. For sure. Stuff, but, yeah. Um, no, I don't feel like they do a great job, but I do think there's light in those places and good things could come. And For sure. Will come maybe hopefully one yeah. day. Okay, so you told us about the word midget. Is there anything yeah. else? Um, I think silence and staring okay, is uh-huh. one of those things. Like, just like I said, asking questions mm-hmm. and talking about it. Mm-hmm. Um, I think if your child sees someone that they don't know about, going up to them and saying, "Hey, my child notices." that you're different. Mm-hmm. You don't have to say dis- – there's such a um, politically correct society today mm-hmm. that I feel nervous about advising people because everyone's different. Every, you're exactly right. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah, and so I would say going up to someone and saying, my child notices you're different, um, could they ask you a few questions? Yeah. And just like leaving it up to give the person that's different the power mm-hmm. oh, that's um, good. Mm-hmm. and the voice yeah. to share if they want to. And if they don't, they can say, oh, no, I'm busy. Yeah. But you did. You gave them that opportunity without just kind of assuming by staring and coming to your own assumptions. Yeah. 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 Guys, before we get back to talking with Kate, I want to tell you about another sponsor for our show, and it's International Justice Mission. You've heard me talk about them a lot lately, and I love this organization. They are literally the largest international anti-slavery organization in the world. And yes, slavery exists. In fact, 45 million men, women, girls, and boys are daily being bought, sold, trafficked, and used against their will. But IJM is bringing hope to the situation. Um, They're wanting you to join them. They're wanting you to join them in something called Freedom Sunday. The idea is super simple, that on September 25th, 2016, they're asking your church to dedicate its whole service to freedom. One Sunday to awaken God's people and answer his call to see slavery in for good. So it starts with you. IJM is asking you to join them. They're asking you to reach out to your pastor, to reach out to the leadership at your church and ask them if they would commit to hosting Freedom Sunday. They're going to give you all the information you need and someone from IJM will personally walk you through the process. Guys, go to IJM.org slash happy hour. And from there, you can click on Host a Freedom Sunday. Even if you're just interested in I highly recommend you check out the webpage and just see what IJM is doing around the world. That's IJM.org slash happy hour. All right, here's my conversation with Kate again. We've seen that with our family looks different with having three children that mm-hmm. we've adopted and, you know, three of them are black. And so... I see it with, I'm like, I, when you were talking about that first grader, it made me think of, you know, several times when we first started going to a new school mm-hmm. and the kids would just say, how can you be Amos's mom if you don't look alike? Mm-hmm. Um, and that's a question that a lot of people would think, you know, if we were mm-hmm. out, um, but adults just wouldn't say it. Mm-hmm. But I, I always love it when kids say that because then yeah. we get to chat about, you know what? God puts families together in lots of different ways. And God put our family together this way. And I am his mom. And he has, you know, his first mom lived in Haiti. And and so I feel like after that, the ki- and you know what's funny too? I don't know if you've noticed this. Is kids mm-hmm. are just like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's it. <laughs> Moving on. Yeah, that's so true. Once you get kids' questions answered, that's the best thing about kids. Yeah. And I think the place where we need to be teaching about differences. Because once you answer a kid's question, they don't have any more. Right. Like, and I they know. see everything as the same then. Yeah. 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 Um, okay. So you've given us some good stuff. Now, you you told me um, in a little form here that you don't mind people asking you the questions that they might be thinking that we as adults might think would be inappropriate. Mm-hmm. Like maybe people wondering, how do you drive? How do your clothes yeah. fit? You don't mind those. No, because... I wonder them about people that are different than me. (laughs) So there you go. Okay, so let us know. Yeah. Like, I'm like, I wonder, um, I wonder just the same amount. And I want 
my questions answered. Yeah. We moved into a new neighborhood, and there is a man down the street that is completely um, in a wheelchair. And he looks paralyzed from the shoulders down. Mm-hmm. And, um, and you have questions. We, yeah. I was like, what happened to you? Mm-hmm. You know, like, why are you in a wheelchair? And I see that hesitation in myself. But then he wanted to tell us the whole story, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Like, he knows we know. He sits outside. And, right. Um, it just was a friendship that was has been awesome to get to know him. And I wondered the same things. Yeah. So, so answer some of those questions for us. Well, the most common ones, what are they? For kids, it's how do you drive? Okay. Because kids learn that we're adults Mm -hmm. and driving is such an adult thing. Yeah. So they're curious. How does this happen? Yeah. Yeah. So curious about how we drive is probably the main one. And it's really simple and it's really a lot easier to show kids. We have like extenders on our pillow our pedals. Mm-hmm. So it's just like something that clamps onto the pedal and then like a metal pole and then like another pedal. So it just, or metal stick. And so it just like extends it out um, to where it works for us and you like screw it on and we go. And you're so ready to go. Really, yeah. yeah. So it's really easy. Having the type of dwarfism that we were born with um, just affects the bones in our arms and our legs. Mm -hmm. So our torso is average sized, um, which is crazy how that happens. So sitting in a seat, I can like sitting next to you, we would look the same size via our torso. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, So we just need a little extra length on the pedals and then we're good to go. And so that too is another question, like where do you buy your clothes? Mm -hmm. Um, And we buy our clothes from every store, that anyone else would buy. I really like anthropology. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's just having them. Yeah. So our torso is the average size. So it's just finding something that fits and then it's making the sleeves or the dresses or the um, pant legs shorter. Do you do that yourself? No. I I wish. I was going to say, wow. I would love to, but the time can – I'm a little bit of a perfectionist. Mm. And the time it would take, it would just not be healthy. I always have – I have a very big dream and vision of being able to sew. Yeah. But in reality, it has never taken hold. I had that rea- that dream too, and I got a sewing machine. Me and too. And like, <laughs> I am going to sew a quilt. Oh, like, you're going big. Like, you're yeah. not just going to, like, sew a, a blanket or something. Mm-mm. No, and I went into stores, and I did all the Google research, and I had two people in two stores – Tell me that I was not going to be able to do this by myself. And I said, well, I don't really want to pay for a class. So I got to figure this out. And that's what Google's for. That's right. We have the internet. I did it. I mean, you made a, a quilt? Little, it's a little wonky, but you did the quilt it. was made. And then my sewing bug kind of relaxed. Yeah. Mm. I have a friend, um, Annie, who she like took up to making quilts. And they're beautiful. Yeah. And I'm just yeah. like, people just have it in them. Yeah. It's, it's so fun, but a lot of work. Yes, um, yeah. but some people I, it feels like it might be like a like a stress reliever for them, maybe. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, and it's just the most precious gift you could give someone mm, because yeah. it's so much sweet labor. For sure, for sure. Um. So yeah. So I. But having, so those are the most two common questions you get. I would say so. Yeah. And people want to know how we adapt our house to work. Oh, okay. Um, and I've been thinking about like a blog post to explain that, but it's really, um, I've written it like three times and it's really short and it's really not very interesting because we just use step stools. <laughs> You're like, it's really complex, uh, step stools. Yeah, we go we go to Target and buy uh-huh. a few step stools <laughs> to put, we maybe have a few more than average, right. but that's really about it. People would be greatly disappointed because they would think that, like, you had some contractor come in and... Yeah. 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 I mean, I would love that one day to make my dream kitchen where I could, like... Oh, I'm sure. ...have a low sink and all those things. But, yeah, we're not there right now, so... Yeah. Yeah. Um, Okay, well, can I ask you a question? 
Yeah. And there's like openness here because I feel like that you've yeah. made me feel comfortable where I can ask this. Of course. Um, so on the one show that I had seen with the mm -hmm. family, not the one that had adopted, mm -hmm. um, both the mom and the dad had dwarfism. Mm -hmm. And then, I don't know, they maybe had three or four kids. Mm -hmm. And not all of their kids had dwarfism. So is this hereditary? It is. Okay. So on the show that you watched, Little People, Big World, mm -hmm. Amy and Matt, both have dwarfism, but the difference is they have um, two ty different types of dwarfism. Oh. So Amy, the mom, has achondroplasia, which, which is, is what, what you, okay. Andrew and I have, uh -huh. and Matt has a different type, and I cannot, I don't know what it's called. Okay. So though it is hereditary, it's a dominant gene once you have it. Mm -hmm. So for example, if Andrew and I, because we have the same type of dwarfism in the same type of gene, if we were to have a baby, mm -hmm. they would have a 50% chance of having dwarfism, a 25% chance of ha being average sized, mm -hmm. and a 25% chance of actually not being compatible with life because they, because of the double dominancy of genes. What do you mean when you say that? I mean, and I don't know this completely, but just through my research, that I could lose the pregnancy early mm -hmm. or they wouldn't be able to live past probably a few weeks. Okay. Um, if that, like mm -hmm. if they live to birth, if they live a day, mm -hmm. their lifespan is really short. Because of the double dominance, something doesn't get developed and mm -hmm. I can't remember. Some okay. vital organ right. doesn't get developed. So with a person that has a type of dwarfism and a different type of dwarfism, they have a 25% chance of having a child with dwarfism, but then a 75% chance, I think, of having an average-sized child. I got you. Because the chances change mm -hmm. um, when it's two, two different, different kinds. Okay, I yeah. got it. Yes. So we would, our situation would look a little different where we would have the higher chance of having a child with dwarfism. Mm -hmm. Did you guys know that you had the same type of dwarfism when you met? Yes. Was that like a first date conversation? Um, no. <laughs> it was, it was obvious. It, I mean, the characteristics were pretty similar. Okay. Okay. I remember though, once we got engaged, I was like, are you sure you have this? <laughs> Just because the statistics right. are like kind of scary. Mm -hmm. And so, um, but we just like open them. We have them with open hands okay. and we would love to start a family mm -hmm. someday soon. But, you know, it's just going to look different for us. Yeah. Um, and the Lord will bless us if we get to carry a child and give it life for nine months or yeah. 90 years. Mm -hmm. So exactly right. we're just, um, we're ex I'm excited about the opportunity to share um, whatever life comes mm -hmm. um, to us and just speak that because it's such um, a joyful time and um, we're excited. That's awesome. Okay. Before yeah. we get on to what you're loving and what you're reading, I have one more question that I want to ask you. Go for um, it. And mainly because you keep saying this, I want to have you pointed out as well. You keep using the word average size. Yeah. And so is that the correct term? And I'm assuming it is because you're saying it, but I think that's something that people need to hear as well. Like what does that look like um, talking about dwarfism and non-dwarfism? Yeah. Average size? Is that what you – because I know I have a friend who has a daughter with special needs, and yeah. she taught me a long time ago um, about typical versus non-typical. Yeah. Um, and so is that correct terminology? I would say, I would say so. I mean, okay. I can't speak for everyone, but I think that's a pretty also politically correct word. Yeah. Of there's average size people and there's unaverage size people, mm -hmm. and we're just smaller. Um, yeah. But I think it's a really good – I think, like, speaking to you, Jamie – that, like, you get that then. Like, mm -hmm. if I say that my parents are average size, like, it connects really quickly, mm -hmm. what I mean. Yeah. Um, and I think that's, like, a, like we need to be, like, direct in our language, too. And Yeah, um, sure. Like, it helps the communication, you know? Uh, yep, yep. I, I, lo I love chatting with you because I feel like I don't live in this world as much as I used to when our kids first came home. Yeah. But there was just a lot of, like, rephrasing stuff and, yeah. you know, like, questions for us, like, um, 
do you know their real mom? And yeah. that used to like just get under my skin and I would just want to, you know, because I'd be like, well, what am I fake? Like I am their yeah. real mom, but I know what they meant. You know, they yeah. meant, you know, their birth mom or their first mom. And so for me, it just turned into a lot of, which I'm sure you do all the time, a lot of just like, yeah, I do know their first mom, you know, yeah. da, 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 da. Um, but it is, it's just about letting people know, because honestly, I don't know if you feel like, besides the crazy people taking your picture, because I, yeah. I, this, I'm going to like lose sleep over that right there. Okay? <laughs> but besides those people, I would guess, and you can let me know if I'm wrong. I would guess that most people, if they say the wrong word or act awkward, it's only, it's not out of. Um, meanness it's just out of maybe ignorance and fear would you agree oh completely yeah. and that's I think why I feel such a passion to blog mm -hmm. because if that's it we just need to tell people yeah you're right like, <laughs> if we if can solve this problem guys just we talk can about deal it. with that yeah. yeah yeah um that's how I feel a lot of times like mm -hmm. with especially with kids with questions yeah all we have to do is answer their questions and love it. we're working on getting rid of ignorance and that's awesome I love it so much and you know as as you know, everyone that's listening to this show, I hope that it just makes you also think about like, hey, what are some thoughts that I have? Or what are some questions that I have? Or what have I like not knowingly intentionally done that might have hurt somebody? And so yeah. it's good to think about those things. It's so So I would love to know what you're loving these days. Okay. So I am loving we just moved back to Nebraska, mm -hmm. which is my home state. We used to live in North Carolina. And my parents live at the lake, and we are just loving just the summer, enjoying oh, the summer yes. at the lake and just relaxing with my family. It's just been so sweet. I've lived away for almost three years, and it's just been so fun to be close to my family and enjoying summertime. I love it. And you love the lake? Oh, I love, yeah. I love the lake. I love any source of water. Oh. So, so it's good. just so fun. I would have called myself a beach person forever. And I still am a really big fan of the beach. Yeah. But we went to spend like a week at the lake a couple of years ago. And I remember thinking, this is what I love. This is the life. So good for it's you. Sweet. Yeah. I grew up, I was raised and grew up and went to college in Nebraska. So I would say that I'm more of a lake person than beach. Yes. Because <laughs> the options are limited. Yes, yes. Yes. They're a little ways away. Um, and something that we are obsessed with right now is our puppy, Louie. Oh. We got a puppy and it is the best thing. We love, we're crazy puppy parents. How like, old is your puppy? Cause I have a puppy. Oh, good. She's gracious. six months. Okay. So we're like getting out of like the crazy phase of like eating everything. Uh -huh. And, um, like, I feel like he's like a little more sane. Um, but we love him. What kind of puppy? <laughs> a cockapoo. Okay. So like half poodle, half cocker spaniel. Um, he kind of looks just like a teddy bear. Aww. Um, we just got a labradoodle, which is half. Same thing. Poodle. Yeah. Yeah. How big is your dog supposed to get? They said about fifty-five pounds. Yeah, we couldn't do that. We we got it. We got the cockapoo because it was supposed to be twenty. Okay. And we're still like in that like apartment living yeah. situation, mm -hmm. townhome. And we're like, we can't do a big job. Yeah, I know. We only can now because we moved and have more space. But our yeah. puppy now, when we're recording this, is probably about nine or ten weeks old. Okay. Oh, so, so you just got it. Like, literally, we've had it for like ten days. And, Kate, let me tell you, the last couple of days, I've gotten up at like four in the morning to take that dog outside. Mm -hmm. I don't like that. It gets better. Okay. Well, I, of course, I mean, I did this with babies, so I know it gets better. Yeah. But I'm just like, oh my gosh, this is the summer, which yeah. I, I was like, I thought this summer would be the best time. It is the best time because mm -hmm. the kids are here. Like, I don't know yeah. what we would do if they weren't here. Um, but it's killing my sleeping in. This dog it is. is. Yeah. It is. We took our dog to a puppy class because I thought he was like possessed by the devil. <laughs> and is he or did he? No, he's not. They say <laughs> every new puppy parent that's never had a dog feels this way. But I seriously took that dog in and I was like, I think we got the wrong one. That like, I is don't hilarious. think he looks at, we take him outside. He comes in and he potties and just stares <laughs> at me. Like he's, we're not on the same page here. So did like, the puppy school help? It helped us a lot. Okay, okay. It was We're going like, to do it too. Yeah, it was like a support meeting for <laughs> parents. 
<laughs> I so, felt like, like... You can tell you're a first time puppy owner. Uh, okay, so you're loving uh, the lake and the summer and your dog and what else? Okay. Um, I don't know if you've ever heard of these shoots. They're called Pons. P-O-N-S. No. And they're these cute sandals. And it's a family owned business. And they're made from, I can't remember what country. Oh, Spain. Okay. And they're the best sandals. And the reason why I get so excited about shoes is I was born with child size feet, which is awesome in some aspects of cheaper shoes, but not aw- awesome when you walk by the Nordstrom's shoes right. and you're like, I can't wear any of those oh. sandals. Okay, tell me how to spell it. P-O-N-S, Pons. P-O-M-S. Oh, P-O-N-S. Oh, N. Okay. I was like, all I'm looking is pulling up is pom-poms. Okay, so Pons. Got it. Yeah. They're cute. They're awesome. And they're like crazy comfortable. Ah, I love it. I love it. Okay, what are you reading? I am reading, and I really think everyone needs to read this. It's called Hope Heals. Uh, Okay, you're going to think this is crazy. Crazy. Um, I just read that book recently uh, within this summer. Um, I just read it a couple weeks ago. And actually, uh, your show is airing. And guess who we just had on um, last week? Crazy. Catherine Wolf. Yes. Oh, yeah. She is someone I want to meet in my life. Uh. Like, Catherine, call me. (laughs) <laughs> Catherine called me. She's so wonderful. She's so, so wonderful. wonderful. Yes. She just is so inspiring and um, just speaks a story. And I know it's their story, but a story that needs to be told about their relationship and servant, serving each other. Mm. Um, and then just life and her mm. outlook on that um, is just I read it in a day. Like, yeah. I couldn't put it down. Mm-hmm. It's really, really, really good. And she's, I met her at the If Gathering this year, mm-hmm. and she is just a joy. Yeah. Really is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, great book. I hope everyone does read it. Yes. Or listen to her podcast. Yeah. Or you can go back. If you didn't hear last week, I talked with Catherine, um, and you can listen to that. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Kate, this has been awesome. I am so glad that you got to come on the show. Me too. So, so happy. And I hope that you have just the rest, fabulous summer. Yeah, you too. I hope your puppy gets better. It will. I yeah. Promise. You know what? On one hand, like that getting up in the middle of the night is a pain, but mm. she hasn't chewed anything up mm. and she actually is pretty chill because I had a puppy when I was in high school, which was like my dog. But of course I ended up, my parents like took care of the dog every day, which is exactly what my children are doing. Um, but that dog was crazy. Like cra- it was full lab and it was crazy. And so on one hand, I'm like, she's not crazy. You know, yeah. she just is a puppy. Yeah. So my goal most of the day is how can I wear her out? Yeah. Yeah. That's good. I know. That's, that's what you need to do. Yes. That's- yes, yes, yes be ahead of the game ahead of the game that's exactly right <laughs> but uh, hope 12 week mark that's when that's start when, to okay quit. okay it's like a pregnancy 12 weeks yeah. you know you're you're kind of over the hump yeah things like they get it like okay. they start like they actually start responding to you okay that's good that's good <laughs> um kate thank you so much um your words will encourage people and educate people and just give us all something to think about and so It's been just a joy and honor talking to you today. So thank you for coming on Happy Hour. My pleasure. All right, guys. Good stuff, wasn't it? I told you that you were going to love her. I hope that you were encouraged and informed throughout this episode. I really encourage you to check out Kate's blog and her Instagram. She takes some really great pictures, and her blogs are very informative. Um, I'll put a link to both of these in the show notes. Guys, remember, I told you about this last week, but we're always looking for more people more companies to partner with the happy hour there's several opportunities right now for you to partner with us from advertising on the show to putting your product in goodie bags at these live events we make the most amazing gift bags to give to the ladies um, to talking about your products on the show if you're interested in partnering with the happy hour for live events or regular shows any way that you can think of email info at jamieivy.com 
Guys, as always, every single thing that we ever talk about on the happy hour is going to be on my website, jamieivy.com. And the reason I do that is because a lot of you tell me I listen while I'm washing dishes or I listen while I'm running or I listen in the car with my kids. And so we want to make sure that whatever we talk about, you have the ability to go find. jamieivy.com is where it is. Today's show is edited by Knox McCoy and the music is from my friend Jason Poe. Guys, next week is the 100th episode of the happy hour. I cannot even believe that. Can you believe it? You're not going to want to miss it. I've been saying all along that I wanted to have one of those cakes that said 100th episode of the happy hour like they do for TV shows, but you couldn't have any and it would just be me eating it and that's not going to go over well. So we're not going to do that, but it's going to be super fun. And so join me next week on the happy hour for the 100th episode. Guys, enjoy your week. Cherish these summer nights with your friends and family. Share the show with a girlfriend, and I hope you have a happy hour with a friend this week. Guys, I'll see you next week for happy hour number 100.